Hello and welcome to my first Heroes and Generals class guide. This video is aimed to aid rookie snipers and give them a little more clue on what they're supposed to do to make the best out of the recon class. I'd also like to keep the guide as simple as I can, so there may be a few stuff which I'll miss out, so please feel free to ask me questions in the comment section below. Do note that this video was made on open beta spots build, so it is quite likely that some of the information I'll mention in this video will be changed in the future updates. So, first of all, to be a good sniper, you need a sniper rifle. Seems like a super obvious point to cover, but a lot of people actually misunderstand and think that they receive a free sniper rifle upon training your infantry to be a recon. Unfortunately, that is not the case. Unless you get the academy trained recon, you'll need to separately purchase your rifle with either 250,000 credits or 2,000 golds. So be sure to already have enough resources before unlocking the recon class. I won't go into details on how to quickly obtain credits, but playing with either Factory Standard Thompson or the MG42 in skirmish map seems to do the trick. Now that you have your rifle, let's take a look at the rest of your loadout. Both the Carabiner 98 and the M903 takes out 4 slots with one extra pouch, meaning that you have very limited choice on what to bring with you to the battlefield. For most players, I would suggest going with a pistol to aid you in a close combat situation, not to mention that they are also budget friendly compared to anti-personal mines such as the M2A3 and the PMK40. As for the combat badges, no doubt the camouflage badge with an ability to get rid of the kill cam is by far the most suitable for recon, but the truth is you're probably not watching this video if you are experienced enough to obtain the camo badge. So my first pick will be the ghillie badge which makes you somewhat immune to enemy spotters, or you could go with fast reload greatly reducing the time it takes to rechamber your next round. Jumping into the action for the first time with your rifle, you might be a little lost on what you're supposed to do as a recon. Gathering information, acting as an eye for your team, killing everybody you see, or sitting far away from the action. In a way, all of these are correct but wrong at the same time. What I consider a good recon, what uh, most people consider a good and beneficial recon for the team is somebody who can do all of these in a good balance. Now I did say multitasking is important as a recon, but at the end what you'll be doing most of the time is sniping down targets and harassing the enemy team. The best way to do this is to locate yourself in a good position where you have a clear sight on both attacking and defending objective, as well as the focus of the battle, in this case the bridge. For a starter, pick an easier target distanced at 100 to 200 meters. At that range, marking an accurate headshot shouldn't be a problem. As you get used to your rifle and its ballistics, you'll learn to lead your target and start engaging something more challenging and valuable, such as enemies in mobile jeep or a careless tanker sticking his head out. Each damage dealt, every kill you gain will give you points to progress the sniper assault ribbon, which opens up a whole new dimension to sniping in this game. I am a huge lover of bolt action rifles in this game, and I think the modding feature gives the most benefit to the Ka-98 and the Springfield, both Iron Sight and the Scope variants, turning them into a deadly one-shot kill rifle. Once you reach rank 9 of your Sniper Assault Ribbon, you should have modding access to every part. My recommendation is as I said before, focusing on damage and range perks to increase the chance of getting that one-shot one kill. Now you can take a different approach, improving your precision and stability, but all of those can be covered with your skill, not to mention that the difference between taking one or two shots to kill your enemy could make a change to your life and death. Do note that the modding example you're seeing right now will cost you quite a lot of initial cost, along with two to three thousand credits per game to repair and maintain. Finally, I have one last important advice for you guys, don't be afraid to relocate. Every kill you get means that there is that one extra guy desperate to seek a revenge on you. I know it can get really comfortable when you're on a good streak, but try to relocate every now and then to avoid being hunted, and in the worst situation, giving your rifle to the hands of your enemy. I hope you learned something from this guide, and again, please feel free to ask me questions in the comment section below, and I'll try to reply as soon as I can.